the world population has reached 8 billion people and increasing by millions year by year. Since 1990, food consumption has also more than doubled and in 2058, the population has expected to reach 10 billion people. As the global population continues to grow, if agricultural yields are not achieved, billions of people may face starvation and hunger. So how on earth we are going to feed all these people? Well, one country is setting a blueprint on how to solve food crisis and that country is the Netherlands. The Netherlands is a small, densely populated country with more than 1,300 inhabitants per square mile. Even though the Netherlands is 412 times smaller than Russia, it is agricultural exports are four times that of Russia. Netherlands is so tiny that it is bereft of almost every resource long thought to be necessary for large-scale agriculture, yet it is the globe's number two exporter of food as measured by value, second only to the United States, which is 270 times bigger than the Netherlands. Even one of their most popular and long-running TV shows is about farmers finding partners and love. It's like America has the Kardashians, the UK has the Love Island, and the Netherlands has this reality TV show, but it is between farmers. So you can see how the Netherlands is very obsessed with farming and agriculture. In terms of fertile land, interestingly, India has 95 times more fertile land than the Netherlands, but the Netherlands has two times more agricultural export value. How on earth the Netherlands being this tiny has achieved tremendous results in producing so much food. The Netherlands has always been one of the richest countries in the world for 500 years. Food production was never a priority, hunger was never a problem, not even during the Great Potato Famine. In World War I, there were some food shortages, but nothing catastrophic. During World War II, however, hunger swept through the densely populated western part of the country. Tens of thousands of people died and everybody suffered. After the war, the government decided that food production in the Netherlands should become so abundant that there will never be hunger again. So currently, Dutch farmers are pioneering ways to produce more yield per hectare, relying on modernized agrarian technology and research. Education and research are very imperative to Netherlands' success in agriculture. So Wageningen University, which is the world's top agricultural institution, constantly adds new innovation and technology to Dutch agriculture. So it is basically like a NASA of agrarian domain. The Dutch government in collaboration with Wageningen University has ensured that the Dutch agricultural lands can be efficiently cultivated. It also uses modern technologies and unprofitable farms are sold to the government or advised to grow something else. As a result of a policy change 70 years ago, currently the Netherlands is one of the largest vegetable growers in the world. Twice as many tomatoes are produced in the Netherlands as in a country like France. It is also the largest exporter of flowers. Additionally, Dutch dairy serves 5% of the world market, and the Netherlands also sells many agricultural technologies and machinery abroad. Located in Central Europe, the Netherlands is perfectly placed geographically for exports. They have excellent transport infrastructure and logistics to most countries in the world. The port of Rotterdam plays a huge role, as does Schiphol Airport. Schiphol Airport and KML have a large network making it possible to transport fresh products all over the world on a daily basis. For example, fresh flowers picked from the fields today can be delivered tomorrow to distribution centers in Argentina or Japan. Moreover, European subsidy funds are spent efficiently in the Netherlands. Despite extensive agriculture, it has been one of the least recipient of the European agricultural subsidies for years. Of the 59 billion euro agricultural budget, the Netherlands receives approximately 800 million euros. The rest of the budget goes to a more traditional farming in the European Union, whether those traditional farms are profitable or not. 
As soon as a Dutch farmer applies for a European subsidy, his farm is examined by the government and Wageningen University. It is inspected which crops are most suitable, how much water certain crops need, and profitable for its fields. After soil investigations and cost calculations, the farmer can be advised to grow something else or even stop farming to avoid potential losses and wasting water. And this whole method is called Precision agriculture. Precision agriculture is an approach to farming that helps utilize the best sources available for the soil to enrich with optimum health and productivity. Wageningen University conducts a lot of research on precision agriculture, and it provides farmers data in precision farming. Farmers have to control drones, and the data is sent to the university. With the information that the farmers receive, it's possible to farm accurately and exactly where and how efficiently a crop can grow. Robots and drones play an important role in the Dutch agriculture, horticulture, and nature conservation. For example, this is a cockpit of a Dutch tractor. This one is called a Greenbot, and this robot follows its path on a pre-programmed route. This one will stop automatically if it's hindered by an obstacle, and the farmer will be informed by a text message. This is a husky, self-learning robot. There are also special sensor robots to ensure that water is added when necessary. Additionally, soil investigation by the university may show that onions grow well in a certain month and a few months later carrots or potatoes, and that the next year it's best to grow grain. This makes flexible farming interesting, and the fields can produce as more and economically as possible. This is a different policy from other European countries where most farmers simply receive their subsidy without further technological research on their fields. Of course, not all agriculture can be replaced by robots or machines. However, the EU should encourage farmers who receive subsidies to modernize and support them with the latest technological developments. Another innovation from the Dutch is that they use LED lights on crops very efficiently. Farming with LED lights and with advanced LED lightning can save 90,000 euros annually on energy costs. Of course, this is not a rocket science as there are many underground bunkers where people grow illegal weed with this method, but Dutch farmers do it very efficiently and on a massive scale. Greenhouse agriculture is another popular form of Dutch agriculture, especially in winter times. There are endless seas of greenhouses in the Westland region of the Netherlands. They have almost completely eliminated the use of chemical pesticides on plants in greenhouses, and since 2009, Dutch poultry and livestock producers have cut their use of antibiotics by as much as 60%. In fact, their techniques are so advanced that they don't cure their crops with insecticides, but prevent diseases by nipping them in the bud. These innovative practices are so efficient that, for instance, a Dutch farmer uses 4 liters of water to grow a kilo of tomatoes, while the global average stands at staggering 214 liters. The Dutch government, Wageningen University, and all other top agricultural institutions in the Netherlands are also exporting knowledge and expertise all over the world. For decades, the Gulf states and China have had close ties with the University of Wageningen. The Chinese government stimulates Chinese students to study in the top Dutch agrarian institutions. So in this way, China also hopes to gain knowledge about mass production efficiency. The agricultural relationship between the Dutch and Chinese is very strong, and for example, Dutch dairy products are in high demand in China. At some point, demand was so high that many Dutch dairy producers have decided to build dairy farms in China. I have made a video about how China feeds its 2 billion population, it's an extensive investigation with satellite imagery, and it's very interesting, you can check it out here. Here. Additionally, in the Middle East, the Dutch managed to increase the growth of potatoes in the early 1980s from 190 tons to 560,000 tons now. This makes potato the largest agricultural product in Saudi Arabia. Water is the biggest bottleneck in the agriculture of the Gulf states. For example, Wageningen University has succeeded in growing vegetables in the desert with minimal water supply. 
The challenging studies mainly focus on wastewater recirculation, alternate cooling methods, water irrigation, and integrated pest and disease control. For example, the university built a glass garden to cool and conserve energy when the outside temperature is more than 45 degrees Celsius. The Dutch agricultural expertise has also penetrated the Indian subcontinent. For example, potato production in India has grown explosively in the past 50 years. After China, India is now the largest potato producer in the world. With 2 million hectares, the cultivation area is 12.5 times larger than in the Netherlands. However, the yield per hectare is much lower, 15 to 20 times lower than in the Netherlands. Dutch knowledge of potato cultivation is highly valued in India. Wageningen University and Indian farmers are collaborating on various processes in developing more efficient cultivation. In a nutshell, we can say the Netherlands is the Silicon Valley of agriculture, or they like to call themselves the Food Valley of the world. The overall role of the country also helps people to take up an interest in agriculture-related sciences and basically showers the researchers and scientists with all sorts of financial grants that help revolutionize agricultural produce. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows. One of the most underreported stories is that Dutch farmers have been protesting against the government because the government has limited the emission of nitrogen and a huge list of restrictions on the agriculture sector to combat climate change, but it's really hurting farmers and their finances, which the government doesn't seem to care at all. Nevertheless, the Dutch innovative culture and ingenuity will find a way from this hurdle. What do you think about the Netherlands agriculture genius and the future of humanity with regards to food security? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. This episode is brought to you with the help of these Patreon supporters. If you want to support this channel, head over to Patreon and thanks to everyone who's supporting. Thanks for watching. More interesting videos are coming up. Please subscribe and hit the like button.